Hey, man. Can you hear me? Up. Oh, yeah, I hear you now. Hey, you hey how, how are you, man? Good, man. How are you? Um, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you uh, so much for coming on. It's nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, where, man. Where, where, so, where do you live? Um, New York. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm in California. Awesome, awesome. So I guess I'll just get right into it. The uh, elephant in the room. Uh, I'm going to try and phrase this question in a way that you can probably answer it. Uh, now, if there was interest for you to appear in Cobra Kai season four and beyond, would you be interested in doing that? Sure, absolutely. You know, if, uh, you know, if, the, uh, if the producers uh, want to bring Mike Barnes back, uh, you know, I'm, I'm as curious as everybody else is to see <laughs> what became of Mike Barnes, you know what I mean? So it's a chance for me after 30 some years to kind of, uh, you know, put a cap on what, what his story was. So for sure, yeah. Definitely. And I, I speak with the producers from time to time. So, um, you know, all I can say is we shall see, you know, uh, but the producers are, are big fans of everybody that was in the original um, Karate Kid films. And I think they want to work everybody that they can into Cobra Kai, but they want to do it organically and they want to make sure, you know, that they're, they're not just stunt casting and doing cameos, but they're going to actually, um, you know, make the character mean something and, and, and actually be a pivotal piece of uh, the story that they're telling. Now, now, if Mike Barnes was to return to Cobra Kai, where would you like to see the character go? Do you have a personal perspective of the way you'd see him just kind of be incorporated into that story? Well, I, for me, I think uh, it would be interesting if he was able to turn his life around and he wasn't, you know, the horrible human being that he he was back then. But, you know, I mean, he was 17 years old. So, you know, there's definitely hope for someone with few exceptions, there's hope for pretty much anyone who's 17 that they can turn it around. So I think it'd be interesting to see, you know, if he maybe went to the military and became an officer and turned his life around or, you know, uh, did something other than maybe just continue to go down, you know, the dark the, to the dark side and wind up in prison or something. Definitely. And the other thing too is like, he, he was a big karate guy. Like he was good at karate. Oh yeah. He was supposed to be like a ninth degree black belt. Yeah, so so maybe, I don't know, he went in the military and, you know, kind of used karate in that aspect. But, too, but Sorry. How did you originally get the role of Mike Barnes? So um, I got the role because, long story short, I had been studying karate for a long time in Pennsylvania before I moved out to California. And we joined uh, a larger karate organization called uh, the Japan Karate Federation, which was headed by uh, Master Fumio Demura, who also happened to be Pat Morita's stunt double. Oh, wow. And, That's cool. Yeah. So when, when the role for um, Mike Barnes was announced, it was an open call. And so uh, Sensei Demura told me about it. And I showed up at the studio with about 1,500 1500 other people. And John Appleson, who had directed the first two Karate Kids and directed uh, Rocky, he won the Academy Award for that, um, picked me out of the line. And eventually I went inside and uh, screen tested with Ralph. And uh, uh, I wasn't the first choice. They hired someone else for a week and then they fired him and then they brought me back. Oh, wow. That's uh, very cool. Now, also, I'm a big General Hospital fan, uh, personally. So you as uh, AJ. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, so uh, was that... You know, how did you get that role too? So that role I got because I was very good friends with Steve Burton who played <laughs> Jason Quartermain. And we looked a lot alike. We really looked very similar. And uh, he told me they were looking for someone to play his brother. They were getting rid of the actor who was playing his brother and bringing a new actor in to play the same role, which they do a lot in soap operas. So he, he really helped me get um, a screen test and uh, I was actually the only guy screen testing. So I knew that if I didn't get it, it was because I really stunk. So yeah. uh, luckily I, I got it. Yeah, well, uh, that's um, awesome. Would you be open if, you know, like maybe a new character for you to return to General Hospital at some point in the future? Mm, I don't know. You know, um, I, you know, I, you know, I've got my own show right now that's on Amazon Prime. 
And that's really my, my central focus. So um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, you know, I've learned to say never say never, yes. you know, because 15 years on uh, uh, being away from General Hospital, I came back. But my inclination is that that ship has probably sailed. Yeah, definitely. Now, I, I'm sure I could probably come up with the answer to this myself. But what's your favorite Karate Kid movie? My favorite Karate Kid movie? Yeah. It's the first one. I think really? the first one. Wow, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was expecting you to say three, the first one, interesting. No, the first one's my favorite. Really? I mean, look, the third is my favorite experientially because I was in it, but I mean, <laughs> as far as just uh, uh, as a, uh, you know, you know as, a, as somebody watching the film, you know, the first film really gets me emotionally every time I see it. It's like, um, no matter how many times I see the Rocky movies, mm-hmm. I still get that visceral, uh emotional yeah. feeling that uh you know after you know it came out in 1976 i think rocky came and it just still gets me every time now out of all of the roles you've played um what role would you like to reprise the most and maybe be that character again and- well i gotta say uh i i really like the role that i'm playing on studio city on my show sam stevens yeah. um and i really liked playing Deacon Sharp on The Bold and the Beautiful and The Young and the Restless. Mm-hmm. So, so you're still open to like the soap opera community, yeah. you're not General Hospital. So like- yeah, I would go back. I would go back to Young and the Restless or Bold and the Beautiful if the situation was right, if my mm-hmm. schedule allowed. And you know, you know what I mean? I mean, a lot of things have to kind of happen on both sides. They've got to have the room for me and I've got to be able to do it. Right. Now, out of everyone you've worked with throughout your acting career, who would you like to work with again the most? Who would I like to work with again? Boy, that's a, that's a tough question. I, you know, I don't know that I could answer that exactly. I can tell you a couple of people that I really enjoyed working with. Yeah. I really liked working with Chuck Norris mm-hmm. uh, when I did Walker, Texas Ranger. Mostly, you know, because not only is he an incredibly nice human being, but, you know, I grew up and, and when I was a kid, probably your age, my dad gave me a signed picture of Chuck Norris that said, oh, wow. keep on kicking. And then <laughs> decades later, there I am, and I'm doing a fight scene with Chuck Norris. And that was, that was pretty incredible. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I worked with Eric Roberts on Young and the Restless, which is weird because he's not known as a soap actor. He's a phenomenal film actor. I'd love to work with Eric again on something else. Um, God, who else have I worked with? Uh, uh, wah, 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 wah. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, is there is there anyone that you know that I worked with? That, <laughs> I mean, maybe like Martin Cove, Ralph Macchio. Yeah, well, no, of course. I mean, of course, I'd love to work with those guys again. Absolutely. I mean, that that goes without saying. I thought you meant outside of the Karate Kid. Yeah, and that, uh, that too. But I'm I'm imagining you've seen Cobra Kai. Oh, like I really like Fran Drescher. So uh-huh. I did. The- her and I also did her show uh, Happily Divorced uh, that was you know she's a brilliant comedic actress uh, and she's a really special nice person yeah definitely um so I'm imagining you've seen Cobra Kai right I have seen Cobra Kai so uh, what do you what do you think of it I, I think it was really well done I mean I am oh and I think it's terrific I mean I just I, you know I love that it's it's you know it turns the concept on its head that really uh, you know, maybe Johnny was the one who was bullied. And, and yeah. I love that it's a redemptive story for Johnny Lawrence. Because I think, you know, when you watch, you watch the film, Karate Kid, you, you assume that Johnny is a very wealthy guy. You know, that he's kind of like a snotty, wealthy frat boy type. And to learn that that's not how things panned out for him, and really that he's now a very blue collar guy, I like that. Um, and and I, I like it because it, it goes to show that you know, things are rarely what they seem on the outside. And as you peel away layers of the onion, you know, you, you learn you learn that things are very different than they appear many times. And, and that's certainly the case with Johnny. 
Definitely. And now Mike Barnes is actually technically in season three. And he, he plays yeah. well in Samantha's arc because uh, he when Daniel goes to All Valley with her. So maybe, you know, Mike Barnes, maybe he's not the good guy. Maybe he doesn't have the re- redemptive arc. And he's with Terry Silver, who they tease at the end. And Daniel sees him and, like, freaks out because they really played up. I don't you know why everybody thinks that Mike would be with Terry because Mike didn't accomplish what Terry wanted. So, I mean, it seems to me like Terry would have just made and had nothing to do with Mike. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I actually I actually do see that. Maybe he he just got annoyed and that maybe he yeah. runs into Daniel and Daniel gets scared, but Mike's actually this nice guy now and he's like, I'm sorry. Like, like kind of what they did with Chosen where he's like, you know, I'm sorry. And I, maybe he had the same thing where he regretted it so much, like how they played it up with Chosen that he regretted everything so much with his big fight. Right. Well, you know, here's an interesting thing, too. You know, Mike Barnes' payment for fighting Daniel was 50% ownership in the Cobra Kai dojos, and that was not predicated on him winning. It was like, I'm going to need 50%. So think about it. Technically, Mike's got a very good, uh, he's got a very good argument for coming in and saying to Crease, I want 50% of the dojos. So everybody always assumes that um, everybody always assumes that uh, 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 Mike would, um, you know, f- fight da- fight Johnny. And I, I, I have, uh, you know, there's no reason to believe that Mike and Johnny would necessarily be enemies. Definitely, yeah. I mean, I, I could see maybe like, you know, Kreese owns the Cobra Kai dojo and maybe Daniel figures out that Mike Barnes is this nice guy and maybe he goes for him to help to try and take out Kreese because since he has this ownership, uh, where do you see Terry Silver coming in? Because, you know, it's pretty obvious at this point. It's probably- I mean, you know, the guy's a billionaire. So, I mean, you know, he's got limitless power and reach. So I don't know. I mean, uh, but it could be really interesting. Um, you know, I, I just... I'm probably shooting myself in the foot this by, by distancing myself, distancing Mike Barnes from Terry Silver. Um, but I, I don't necessarily know that just because Terry Silver hired Mike Barnes years ago, he probably never saw him again after, you know, he, he you know, Mike left the uh, All Valley Tournament. You know, I mean, I mean, he was a means to an end for Terry. And, you know, as long as he serves a purpose, you know, he's in Terry's employment. And once he doesn't, you know, it's hasta la vista. Yeah, maybe Terry and Kreese got really pissed off because they were counting on you very much to win. They thought there was no shot uh, you lose. So maybe after the tournament, you know, they just kicked the crap out of you. And maybe that uh, takes you around. Maybe, that's true, yeah. So uh, do you have any theories of your own for, you know, Cobra Kai going on in the future? <sighs> I don't know. Um I think a lot of it's going to have to do with, uh, you know, if, if they bring Terry Silver back and where that goes. Um, I, I think it's interesting that Johnny and, and Daniel are now unlikely allies. Um, and I like that. I like that. Um, um, I, I think a lot of the story that's going to play out is going to have to do with the younger generation of actors. Um, you know, I don't know, and that's one of the things I like about Cobra Kai. I don't like to speculate because I'm always just pleasantly surprised by what the guys come up with. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Like, I, I'm so excited for season four. I mean, I was so excited for season three, too. And once I heard the news, like, it was delayed and delayed, and I was upset about it. But then once I heard the news that, like, you know, if season three would have came out, like, say, March on YouTube, then we would have never gotten season four and so on. So, you know, it's a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Thing happens for a reason, you know. Yeah, I I, I uh, definitely agree on that. Do you have a favorite season of Cobra Kai? Um, well, I really like the first one. Mm-hmm. I, I liked them all. I mean, you know, I, I mean, you know, each each of the first three seasons plays a crucial piece in the puzzle that has brought us to the moment that we're at with Cobra Kai. So, I mean, I I like them all, honestly. And now maybe even with what they did with Crease with the flashbacks, maybe we get some flashbacks of Mike Barnes and we kind of see. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and we kind of see. 
but but yeah but maybe who knows uh boy that would be interesting you know i i i, I did a commercial one time and there was a uh, they hired an actor to play me as a very little boy, which was <laughs> interesting. But it would be interesting to see them cast somebody uh, who's <laughs> me at 17, you know, and, and, you know, kind of imitating and mimicking my performance. That would be uh, both flattering and and strange. I, I, I see them doing so much with Karate Kid 3 because in terms of, you know, everything they've done with Karate Kid 2 it had a big place in the story, but Karate Kid 3 more or less goes back to Kreese and it's a big background on Kreese. Like Karate Kid 2 is like kind of Miyagi's background, but... Yeah, a lot of people think they should have been juxtaposed. <laughs> that, that 3 should have been 2 and 2 should have been 3. Yeah, I, I, I get that a lot, and I understand that. And I feel like there's just so much more you could do with Karate Kid 3 now. Well, I think they had a lot of problems with Karate Kid 3. There were, you know, Martin Cove was doing uh, a TV series at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was originally supposed to be, as I understand it, yeah, I mean, I he was be the bad guy. He's supposed and to be when he got this series, they had to figure something out. To, to reduce the amount of time that they would need him. And so they brought Terry Silver. And then also, you know, you know, they had that story with Robin Lively with Jessica, but it, you know, she wasn't a love interest. She was like a friend. Yeah. And then she kind of disappears halfway through the film. And nice. there, you know, there, I, I, there were, there were a lot of issues with the script. I mean, um, I, I think they did the best with, you know, what they could with some difficult, production circumstances. I mean, you know, the, 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 the film had a lot of, uh, a lot of obstacles. Mm -hmm, definitely. So, so I imagine, you know, maybe the set, like when everyone was on set, was there like some difficulties, a little bit of chaos going on? No, there was no chaos going on. I mean, I was injured during the filming oh, and were. almost died. So yeah. So uh, oh, two God. weeks into the filming, we broke for Christmas and I was having pain in my left leg and Thought it was from the karate. I was taking a lot of aspirin, and on Christmas Day, I wound up in the emergency room in Las Vegas, bleeding to death. Oh, I had my, experienced internal bleeding, so that was a big problem on set. Yeah, yeah, I've told the story many, many, many times. I'm glad you're okay now, man. Look it up, you can read it, but I mean, it's a it's a pretty insane story. But I mean, again, from a pr production standpoint, having one of your lead actors possibly not able to finish the film is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Definitely. Now, do you have a favorite character on Cobra Kai? Yeah, I think Johnny's my favorite character. Yeah, I, I, I feel like almost everyone I've ever asked uh, about Cobra Kai, you know, friends, interviews, it's always, always Johnny. And it's Johnny's story, which is, you know, the... It is Johnny's story. It is. Um, it is. But, I mean, but, but, I, I don't, but Johnny's story doesn't work without Ralph giving the great <laughs> performance he does. I mean, it really is a, sort of a yin-yang thing. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah. And even in the terms of it, like, you know, the story of Johnny, like, he, it seems like two different people from him in the original Karate Kid, from who he is here. And not even sure. in terms of just being the bully, but his personality. It's like this out-of-date guy that's stuck in the... He's kind of anachronistic, right? I mean, he's almost like this guy that, you know, doesn't understand technology and <laughs> longs for the music of the 80s and things like that. But I think that's also what makes him really funny and, and charming. Now, how, how many uh, seasons do you think Cobra Kai could go on for? And where do you see it kind of going? Uh, I, like I said, I don't know where it would go. I, I certainly think that it could uh, go five seasons. I mean, look, here's the thing. When you're doing a TV series, you want it to go five seasons. So you have enough episodes to syndicate it forever. I mean, the reason, you know, you, you, you see... Um, who's the boss or, or some show from the eighties or nineties played over and over again is mm -hmm. because they have so many episodes like cheers, they mm -hmm. sell it throughout the world and they just play it again and again and again. And that's where you make the really big money, the syndication <laughs> money. So I promise you if they can do five or six, they're going to do it. Yeah, definitely. From a point. Yeah, definitely. Now, do you have a favorite uh, movie yourself? Like besides like one that you've acted in, do you have a favorite movie like that you would just say? Um, I, I can name a, I can name a couple. I mean, I mean, you know, as far as older movies, uh, um, Cool Hand Luke, I love with Paul Newman. I love The Godfather. Yeah, I love Apocalypse Now. Um, 
uh, more recent films, um, Sling Blade. Um, I love uh, Goodwill Hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Awesome. Raising- mm-hmm. Now, in terms of like, mo- uh, not movies, sorry, TV shows that you, you've never acted in, but you know, you just sit on the couch, kind of watch it, maybe binge sure. it. What are your so right now? I'm watching uh, Your Honor with Brian Cranston. Really good, mm-hmm. super good, actually. <laughs> uh, check it out. Yeah, really good. Um, what else have I watched? Uh, I've watched so much stuff during the pandemic, and I'm like literally, my, my mind is 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 a blank as to what I've named something. And I probably watched it. Uh, uh, have you ever seen uh, Stranger Things? Stranger Things, I did not get into. Um, I, 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 my wife had me watch Orange is the New Black. I like that. Uh Um, what else did I watch? Oh, you know what I like? I like Goliath with Billy Bob Thornton and uh, William Hurt. I really like that. Um, God, what else? I don't, I don't, I don't even remember what else I've watched, but I've watched a lot of stuff. Definitely. Uh, definitely, man. So thank you so much for coming on, man. (laughs) Before I leave, I do have to do one thing though. I have to plug my new book. My new book is called Way of the Cobra. Yeah, man. I have- and, and you can you can you can pre-order it at wayofthecobra.com. And the book is a uh, a book about uh, success and inspiration, living your best life, and releasing your inner badass. And you know, if this is the year that you decide you want to make things happen. Uh, this is the book to help you do it. I talk about the strategies and philosophies that I have used to write an Amazon new release bestseller, to create an Amazon Emmy award winning show. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I've done. So I really hope everyone will check it out and yeah. order it. And I, I, with all my heart, I believe that the information in this book is transformative. And you know what I say is you know, transform yourself and you can transform the world. Awesome, check it out, New Cobra. I'm sure it's an amazing read. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. All the success in the world. I think uh, you know it's it's amazing what you're doing. You've got you've got great screen presence, and uh, don't be a stranger. All right, Jared, keep in touch. All right, I won't, man. Thank you so much. Take care. Happy New Year. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed the interview, and hopefully you know we'll get some more in the future. Maybe have some of the guys have already done. Come on, come come back. Uh, peace out, you freaking Cobra Cat nerds.